it is a documented fact yeah, that William Samoy Ruto was once the driver to Cyrus Jirongo, an errand boy. Okay? And from there, he got his breakthrough into big business and big politics. And all this is very relevant to how Kenya is being ruled currently. How so? That is the question I answer on my super fascinating show today. Karibu sana. Kipruto Arapkirwa is a super fascinating politician. Now let me just remind you, or in case you didn't know, Kipruto Arapkirwa was the chairman of the UDA party until very late in the game, shortly before the general elections, when he defected to Azimio. Okay? Bwanakirwa is from the Rift Valley and is also a very principled Kenyan. Now, a few hours ago on a talk show, Bwanakirwa made a remark that hit me very hard. It reminded me of many things, made so many things in Kenyan politics crystal clear. And that is what I want to share with you in this super fascinating show. Now, before I tell you what Bonakirwa said, the gems of wisdom that Bonakirwa dropped, the trigger that Bonakirwa dropped, yeah, I want to say something very important. We never choose where we are going to be born. Nobody had a discussion with Almighty God before they were born. I want to be born in a rich family. I want to be born in a middle class family. No. You were just born where you were born. In the circumstances, you were born. You have no power over it. And that is why it is completely nonsensical for somebody to show off and tell others, I was born in a rich, powerful family. I was not born in a poor family like you. <laughs> it is nonsensical. And in my opinion, it is also a provocation to Almighty God who gives us all the circumstances in which we start this life. But the saddest thing of all is that the circumstances under which we are brought up will always affect us for the rest of our lives. And if a person is not careful, it becomes baggage. And it works both ways. If you come from a privileged background, it is baggage that stops you from developing your own things. From achieving your own achievements. Yeah. And if you come from a humble background, it always weighs you down no matter how much money you make. You always imagine the people around you are making fun of you. Yeah, talking about your past, where you came from. Yeah. While no such thing is happening, it just weighs you down. Anyway, that's important as a foundation for the show we're going to have today. Now, Kirwa said that he knows William Samuel Ruto very well. And he told us that the weakness of Buonaruto is that he takes shortcuts. He wants to do things very quickly. Yeah. Bwanakirwa referred to the now very famous three matatus remarks by the president. Three matatus referring not to the vehicles but to three points. Okona matatu. These are the mambo matatus Ruto talked about. You either leave the country go to jail or we transport you to heaven. Bwanakirwa said that the sugar industry is in a mess just as I said in my earlier video. The problems in the sugar industry are complex, very deeply rooted. They are definitely not something you can solve with a magic wand. But Kirwa was saying because of Ruto's character of shortcuts, doing things instantly, yeah, even as he campaigns for 2027, 
because clearly the Luya nation are a key part of his 2027 strategy yeah, along with the Somali community Ruto not only made those very controversial remarks he repeated them yeah, mocking the newspapers social media yeah, he said kama wakusikia vizuri wacha nirudie and he repeated those controversial remarks another way of looking at shortcuts is that also it is cosmetic yeah if you want to take a shortcut somewhere you don't want to go down into the details you want to make a quick cosmetic change yeah the site works out and so those remarks on the sugar industry yeah shortly after the kidnap and release of sugar magnet just one rye in front of a crowd at Mumias where people have suffered so much because of the corruption in the sugar industry those particular remarks populist remarks yeah were a quick shortcut to getting the Luya vote a quick shortcut to fixing the sugar problems and Bwanakiro's remarks opened my eyes because they are 100% true concerning the character of Ruto. Now I don't know if you're aware of this, but William Ruto has never ever been employed to work in an office. Now that one is very significant because experience is good. Experience is the best teacher. You start down there, you're employed, you have bosses, you climb up the ranks slowly. Yeah, that has never happened to Ruto. It has been quick leaps, shortcuts all the way. In fact, Ruto has the distinction in Kenyan politics as the only politician who has been in this game for at least 10 years who has never lost an election ruto has never lost an election ever now for those who are wise that is very telling for those who understand politics the ups and downs the unpredictability of politics which makes it so exciting for many of us who are on this channel for those who understand all those factors that is already a red flag jijazie please okay now according to his own words ruto started out as a chicken seller along the highway other information suggests that he did a lot of things to try and make money which is okay it's good nothing wrong with that and then the major breakthrough came when he got a job not working in an office but as a driver to Cyrus Njirongo who was then a very influential Kano politician and this is where Ruto proved that he is super intelligent because just listening in into conversations yeah, between his boss and other powerful people in Kenya he managed to get his foot into Kenyan politics and into business. Now, of course, his first deal, most Kenyans know, he sold t-shirts, Kano t-shirts, to Cyrus Njirongo. And he was supposed to deliver 10,000. He delivered 1,000 10 times. Yeah, deliver, get it out of the store, re-deliver the same t-shirts, and so on and so forth. Until the records showed that he had delivered 10,000 t-shirts. But in the stores of Bonanjirongo, there were only 1,000 t-shirts. Where did the other 9,000 go? Somebody may have asked. Well, Njirongo solved the mystery. There were no 9,000 t-shirts. There were only 1,000. Delivered, taken back, delivered, taken back, etc., etc. Then he joined YK92. Now, many people referring to this period often make the mistake of saying that Ruto was one of the bigwigs in YK92. That is not factual. 
The truth is, he was just one of the young people in YK92 until one day when he was given a chance to make a speech. And the Kanu people realized, Allah, we have somebody to help us to push our agenda who makes very forceful good speeches. And the rest is history. Huge leap, huge shortcuts, bang into politics. And because of the manner in which he had entered YK92, he was close to the engine room of YK92, where money was flowing out, <laughs> rushing out like a river. What Moy's campaign team did in 1992, information which is in the public domain, is that money was printed in such large quantities. Kenya shillings 500 notes. That time the Kenya shillings 1000 notes had not yet arrived. Yeah, the note had been introduced in Kenya. This money was printed in such large quantities that it was put in cartons at anniversary towers. Now if you've been to anniversary towers you know that the roof is very high. The cartons were put in a huge unpartitioned area and those cartons were reaching from the floor to the roof. True story, no exaggeration. So Ruto was close to this engine room. And while others with him wasted their money buying new vehicles, enjoying in Nairobi, etc., etc., including a journalist I knew very well and who I used to work for, yeah, who is now dead. The YK-92 money killed him. Too much money too quickly, by the way, can kill you in case you didn't know. Yeah, but that's a topic for another day. To his credit, Ruto invested his money carefully. He made new deals. He used his money to take another huge leap into big business in the country called Kenya. Shall I just say the big business was buying and selling land and please allow me to leave it there because I'm very sure you get it you totally understand now very quickly when Ruto became president you will remember the many things that happened but I will single out just two yeah, to echo the words of Kipruta Rapkirwa quick fixes that's what he was really saying and those two examples number one is to do the US dollar Quick fix to strengthening the Kenya shilling against the US dollar was to take pressure off the shilling by buying fuel on credit. We all know that. In fact, at one point, Ruto made a speech and he said he was giving free advice to those who hold dollars that they should sell them quickly because the exchange rate between the Kenya shilling and the dollar, the shilling was about to strengthen tremendously. He didn't say it at that point, but I feel I have to say it on his behalf. Kwanzaa next week, Kenya shilling will be much stronger. Kwanzaa next week, the Kenya shilling will be very strong and people will be impressed. Well, we know what happened. It didn't quite work like that. In fact, the dollar took off and ran in the opposite direction of where it was expected to run. And as we speak, the Kenya shilling is exchanging to the US dollar for more than 140 Kenya shillings to the dollar. Second example, shortcut to bringing UNGA prices down quickly. Now, of course, the policy of this administration was to fix the prices of food by dealing with the production side, yeah, not the consumption side. That is assist farmers, fertilizer, etc., etc., inputs. Make them produce a lot so that the market is flooded with maize, flooded with other foods, and the price comes down. Now, that one takes a bit of time. But there was a shortcut idea. And the idea was to import cheap maize. You know, flood the market with it. Unga prices would come down. And indeed, the president is on record as having told us, Kwanzaa next week, the prices of unga will start to come down. Well, we know what happened with that one as well. 
corruption and greed of those who had been given the opportunity to import maize duty free yeah very cheap maize by the time it arrived here there were too many people eating and the brokers were too greedy the price ended up being very close to the price of other maize in the country yeah and therefore unga prices did not come down and i can go on and on and on we all know what the quick fix to the mandamano was i'm sure we know yeah let a police tandika watu uwa watu that was the shortcut that was the quick fix we also know how that ended up you know my late political lecturer hated shortcuts he would talk about them endlessly and many times i would get very irritated yeah because as a young man in those days i believed there's no harm in taking shortcuts if you want to get somewhere and there's a shortcut that you can take and reach the same place why not there can't be possibly any consequences of taking shortcuts that's how i used to think but the truth is there are very dire consequences kwa mtu ambaye amezoea shortcuts huge quick leaps bila kizungu mingi let me put it this way when you take a shortcut it's really cosmetic you've not gone deep into the issue and therefore what you do can definitely not stand the test of time even if it works momentarily okay it will not stand the test of time that is the truth of this life it is much better in many instances not to take the shortcut not in all but sometimes when a shortcut is useful but in a vast majority of the cases in this life it is better to take the long slog and sort out something by going very deeply into it and in that way you will sort out that problem permanently yeah not very temporarily Now there's a magic wand here that I want you to take careful note of. Yeah, those of us who want to follow Kenya politics deeply. Yeah. Those remarks by Kipruto Arapkiro leading to the information that I've just given you which is really just kufafanua vile alisema an elaboration of what he said. Yeah. It gives you that magic wand to completely understand the policies the decisions the actions everything of this government okay you understand it instantly just like that agreeing to an audit of the 2022 presidential elections suddenly agreeing to it you can be sure there is a shortcut somewhere that has been taken okay in a nutshell there are so many quick fixes that have been implemented in Kenya today that you can just get dizzy thinking about them very many quick fixes and since we know how all quick fixes end or at least most of them you can guess what the consequences are going to be on you and me okay that should be very clear not good disaster in the horizon collapses in the horizon that is really what the facts are telling us now very quickly weekly intelligence briefings number 114 will be out in a few hours you know azmi and relo dinga have clearly backed down yeah they've taken a low profile and there is a very good shocking reason why they have done that nothing to do with the handshake yeah nothing to do with that okay But this reason is highly sensitive i discuss it in weekly intelligence briefings number 114 make sure you don't miss it now you can see the rates on your screens right now you can take the option of purchasing my latest book tyranny of false narratives yeah and when you purchase the ebook you will get 2 months free membership to weekly intelligence briefings others you can use the rates to become a member if your membership has expired or you want to be a new member 
Yeah, I highly recommend it. Please go for it. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.